one. Good afternoon. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami. We have uh, the first in the African Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. Uh, we have the pleasure of having Abdullah Minoa, the neurosurgeon from Nigeria. Uh, and we're going to, I'm going to hand it over to the host of today's program, Zolo. Hello, Zolo. Take it away. Zolo, are you there? <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to... Go ahead, Zolo. Go ahead. I'm facing some difficulties. <laughs> okay, I'll take over then. Okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, uh, let me introduce the panelists before we turn it over to Abdullah. All right, all right. First of all, uh, Zolo, could you please introduce yourself? Yes, yes I am Zolo Ivan. I am a, hello, I'm Zolo Ivan. I'm a medical student from University of Buya in Cameroon. I am a member of the, of the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons, and it's a pleasure for me to be here today. Welcome, welcome. And Augusto, uh, Musindo. Can you please introduce yourself, Musindo? I know you, you're on a different account name today, right? Mr. Musindo? Go ahead, go ahead, introduce yourself, please. I am Augusto Musindo, resident of neurosurgery in Maputo Central Hospital, in Mozambique. Okay. Welcome. Uh, Stefan, Stefan, are you, are you there, Stefan? Go ahead. Yes, yeah, I'm here. Hi everyone, my name is Stefan Gembu. I'm recently medical general practitioner from Cameroon. Welcome. member of uh, EFAN. Welcome, Stefan. Uh, Dung Guga, I don't believe we've met. Can you please introduce yourself? Can you hear me okay? That's yeah. my reference from Nigeria. Go ahead, Dung. Yes, I can. Um, yeah, please introduce yeah. yourself. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Dung Guga. I'm Dung Guga a resident neurosurgeon here in Nigeria, currently at Enugu, University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital. But Dr. Jimo is my boss, my first trainer, and I'm privileged to be a part of All right. the presentation this evening. Nigeria, currently at Enugu. All right, great, Don. Welcome. Joseph, could you please introduce yourself? I don't have your last name there. Go ahead, Joseph. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Joseph Obande. All right, great. Um, Joseph. Abuja Teaching Hospital, Abuja in Nigeria. The presenter, Hello, Dr. Jimo, Hello, is my I'm Dr. Joseph Obande. Right, okay, excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and Dal Guinevere, please, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Can you Hello. please introduce uh, Dal? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Okay, my uh, name is. Please introduce yourself. Yes, good evening. My name is Indal Genevieve, 40 year medical student in the University of Boya. Okay, welcome. Okay, uh, let me just turn off some of the people. Thank have. You. Okay, uh, Malhaku, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, uh, Dr. Adil Malhaku from Rabat, uh, Morocco. Hi, sir. Nice to be here with you all. Uh, welcome. We have no, uh, another Moroccan neurosurgeon here. Uh, Benko, are you there? He may have stepped, Benko, he may have stepped away. Uh, okay, very good. Okay, uh, Abdullah, uh, welcome. And could you please introduce yourself, where you practice, etc., before you start your presentation? And welcome. Uh, okay, very good. Okay, uh, Abdullah, uh, welcome. And could you please yourself where you practice, etc. Go ahead, Abdullah. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Okay. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I am uh, Abdullahi Ojimo. I'm an associate professor of neurosurgery in Nigeria, Amadubelo University in Hostu, and Amadubelo University in the northern part of Nigeria. I am currently in Rabat for fellowship. It's a pleasure to have everybody here, and I'm actually delighted, and I hope that uh, we'll have a, a good time here today. In the panel is uh, Professor Adil Melawi, who is my first, actually, I work directly under him here uh, for the fellowship. And uh, I also have uh, Dr. Obande, who is a, a 
a neurosurgeon. He is working in northern part of Nigeria as well. Was my first training. Then I have Dunguga, also uh, my resident, who is currently somewhere in the southern part of Nigeria, training. Uh, without much uh, other issue, let's go ahead straight into the presentation. I'll be presenting Lexel Gamma Knife Radio Surgery. Um, it's an overview of principles and the operations of Gamma Knife Radio Surgery. Um, Hello, yes. Yes, we're here. Now, yes, my first slide is uh, the two um, pictures up there at my institution. I work with the university as a lecturer and also as a consultant with the teaching hospital. I'm currently, as I said, on fellowship in Rabat uh, at the Hassan, Hassan II Foundation and the uh, Center for uh, Nervous System Diseases and Neuro Rehabilitation. And specifically, I'm working under Professor Melhawi in Gamma Knife uh, Radio Surgery Unit. Now, everybody knows Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populous Black African country in the western part of Nigeria. Two uh, hundred people. Uh, the western part of Nigeria and up there on the left is the flag of Nigeria. There are no disclosures. I've not Professor Kamishi, Professor Wahabi, Professor Arha, and uh, Professor Menhau, who is part of the panelist, panelists this evening and also my institution there in Nigeria. Now, let me start by introducing the, the topic. It's a long discussion. I will start by saying that it's a non-invasive form of surgery, a type of radiation therapy, but it's actually a surgery carried out by neurosurgeons called surgery because of each single session treatment without incision. Highly precise delivery of radiation in sublimiter range, 0 0.1 millimeter, you can imagine the precision that is, relies on 3D images acquired by CT and MRI. And in some instances, 3D images are also acquired in vascular pathologies where angiography is done and incorporated into the uh, planning for the treatment. Uh, we determine the location of the target. Highly focused gamma rays are given to the target, and due to some biologic, biological changes, treatment is uh, given to the tissue within the cranium. Um, improved accuracy of delivery has broad range of clinical app application, as you will see soon. Also known as stereotactic radiosurgery, a type of radiation treatment used commonly for brain tumors and other abnormalities of the head. Investigated in 1950 by Bud Larson and Lars Lexer, first gamma knife device constructed in 1967 and used on patients in 1968, requires no incision. The history of stereotaxy in humans, over time, uh, we've known the brain or central nervous system generally to be housed in a very rigid casing with very eloquent areas. Indeed, the, the brain is very amazing. So over time, people started inquiring on how to get a precision to those eloquent areas without causing collateral damages. In 1908, uh, Hosley, Victor Hosley and his colleague Robert Clark devised uh, a material, a stereotactic material based on geometry to reach a precise part of the brain for some uh, uh, procedures. Over time, nothing much was done again until 1947 to 1949 when two stereotactic devices were brought into uh, brain surgery. Those carried by Henry and Ernest and Lars Larsen in Sweden that was later uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, Electa or as Electa. In 1978, American physician Rosa Abram implemented CT used in stereotaxi. 
Now, part of the history still, gamma knife was developed by, like I said, Lars Larsen, uh, Lexel, and his colleagues in 1968 on use for, on human. It was introduced in the US in 1987, almost 20 years after it was used in Sweden. Over a million people have been used, and specifically, actually, as at last year, I know 1.2 million people all over the world have used, have had the benefit of being treated with gamma knife radio surgery. Now, this is the picture of Lars Lacks in 1949 when he devised the stereotactic frame, which essentially has remained the same up till this moment in principle. And he defined uh, gamma knife radio surgery as the delivery of um, a single high dose of irradiation to a small and critically located uh, intracranial volume through an intact skull. That is without the insertion. Let's say surgery is widely acknowledged as an uh, efficient technique to treat various brain diseases. Now, in principle, this is model four, gamma knife. It has evolved over several models. I'll talk about that uh, soon. This is a three-ton helmet, you know, because the source of the material has to be behind a three-ton helmet that has 201 um, holes or areas of uh, source of cobalt cysty that are focused on a particular part of the brain that has a lesion with so much precision for it to be treated. Now, over the years, we've had uh, this uh, evolution of the machines, uh, the U model, the B model, the C model, the 4A model, then the perfection, and as a matter of fact of recent, um, recent years, we have the... Sorry, there is noise uh, behind, but in any case, we'll continue. The Icon Gamma Knife mach uh, machine, which we are currently using in the center... Maybe, maybe Dr. Dr. John Bennett can mute everyone, please. Dr. John, can you mute everyone, please? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Someone's... Go ahead. We got it. Now, also... Uh, as I've said earlier on, this is uh, actually written uh, information about it. Up to model four, had 201 cobalt sources to be focused on a target for treatment. However, from perfection up to icon, has 192 and has other features that probably we'll talk about soon. Again, in the previous models, we have these uh, properties, then perfection came and was better, but the icon is far superior again because there is possibility of frameless gamma knife radio surgery using the mask. Uh, and also in this icon model, the, the couch of the gamma knife where the patient lies in is also mobile with the head frame in adjusting to treatment positions. Now, this is a very important slide to show the importance of gamma knife radio surgery and how precise it is. Like I said, it is a sub-millimeter, 0.1 millimeter precision. And you can imagine where a lesion is next to organ at risk. What I mean by organ at risk, we'll probably talk about it later, is uh, uh, tissues that might not tolerate um, high dose of irradiation. Examples. Example is the uh, uh, optic pathway, the vestibulocochlear apparatus, the facial nerve, all those ones, and the brainstem. They have to be well taken care of while planning gamma knife surgery. Now, below, now the precision is more high up there with gamma knife radio surgery, and the precision reduces as you go down. So therefore, LINAC is not as precise, of course. It has several sources, over 1,300 sources, which are robotic uh, positioning system, but however, it's not as precise as uh, a fixed uh, G-frame applied treatment by gamma knife. 
Let me say at this point that the, the word gamma knife is being used by other manufacturers as well, especially in the Far East, maybe the China region, where the cost of the sauce, which is very expensive for these 192 sources, but in trying to economize, have uh, devised what we call a rotating frame, which does not in effect give the precision that is needed in this treatment. Now, also, that is exactly what I've said uh, in the previous slide. Now, in basic understanding, I got these uh, pictures to really, really make one to understand because it's highly theoretical uh, at this stage. If you are not involved in it, it's a bit theoretical. But let me uh, use these uh, pictures to really uh, show what the whole principle as children that if you use a biconvex lens with uh, under the sun, it focuses the light at the focal length and it burns the leaf or the paper. That is exactly what happens. Now the helmet, you know, is like converging, converges the rays onto a focus and this focus is where the activity, biological activity is taking place to treat um, um, lesions. The same picture I'm trying to depict here. Now, this we have to fundamentally uh, in radiotherapy images. I mean, uh, in gamma knife radio surgery, beams are applied based on the angle of projection into the lesion, and from the center, from the center of the lesion to the periphery there is rapid there is rapid decay of irradiation therefore making it very very uh, important or significant in this uh, uh, treatment modality now other other uh, machines that were uh, put in place by other people lina and all that does not have this sharp peak instead there is some area of plateau and the treatment is not as effective. Now, we there is another way to look at it, another way to look at it. Uh, biological specificity. What I mean by this is that when we are doing normal radiotherapy, fractionated uh, radiotherapy, now irradiation is applied to the brain. Now, because the pathological part of the brain has some uh, a tissue or chromosomal abnormality, the irradiation at every fraction distorts that tissue and time is given for it to heal, you know, in fractions until cumulative effect comes to play only on where the lesion is, okay? Now, this is what happens. Therefore, the adjacent brain is also affected. But where we are talking of single dose uh, Radiotherapy, that's anatomical selectivity. Only this tissue here is acted upon. And all the biological processes that happen for uh, treatment takes place only in the focused area. Uh, a single dose fra uh, fractionation. By definition, like I said, um, radiosurgery, single dose, single session, anatomical selectivity. While fractionated, it is uh, um, anatomic, uh, fractionated is a um, biological selectivity based on the property of the tissue, normal tissue and the uh, pathology. Now, this is worldwide distribution of what is going on all over the world about the treatment. Sorry, this is a, this center here, what uh, we've treated in the last 11 years, that's 2000, and, uh, 2000, sorry, 12 years, 2008 to 2019, we've treated, uh, uh, and world over is 1.2 uh, 1 million people treated. This is the distribution of what uh, we've uh, treated here. A majority of them, AVM, meningiomas, metastasis, uh, other lesions, other benign lesions, carvanomas, uh, tremor, we'll uh, soon look at it. Also functional uh, pathologies are treated, trigeminal neuralgia, 
pituitary adenoma visual, uh, vestibular schwannoma. Now, the first application of gamma knife was much more popular for the treatment of uh, AVM, actually. Now, treatment applications, brain tumors, both cancerous and non-cancerous, primary or secondary, uh, vascular pathology, ABMs, cavernomas, and AB, uh, fistulas, dura fistula, functional application, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, Parkinson's disease, tremors, epilepsy, more. In fact, some psychiatric problems, severe depression, obsessive compulsive disorders are being treated and uh, being approved in stages for uh, treatment with gamma knife radio surgery. Now, the special property of perfection machine, that is the machine before this icon, um, is, has best dosimetry performance, unlimited cranial reach, meaning within the chamber, the machine has a room to shift the head of the patient to the area of maximum focus. Since I told you earlier on, is, it has been perfected so much to the sub-millimetric uh, measure. Full automation of the process, best irradiation, patient and staff comfort, and similar radiation profiling as prior units. Now, ICON has special property, which I've talked about earlier on. Now, it focuses and delivers from 192 sources and beamed via collimator, four millimeter, eight millimeter, and 16 millimeter into a target. Uh, only the pathological tissue is affected and the effect is long term. Now, it is very important for you to appreciate this curve. How do we know the doses are applied? It is known over time in the past uh, when it was being used that uh, patients were studied and it was, no, this is the percentage uh, effect and the dosage in gray. Now, for people with um, little gray for little gray, little is achieved. And as the gray increases, it reaches a point that it starts flattening. Therefore, this is the point that it is ideal as the best treatment uh, point to give to a patient. Anything beyond that can only give a, a side effect. Then the next slide is, with this sigmoid curve, also it is known that lesions that are irradiated far more than the tolerable dose tend to have side effects uh, more. And smaller lesions need higher dose than bigger lesions. This uh, actually graph explains it all. Patients are usually referred from other centers, just like any highly specialized field. Patients are fully evaluated by taking adequacy history and full examination. And patients sometimes present with problems that are referable to primary disease in case of metastasis. Um, common metastasis in women usually is from a metastasis from the lungs, from the breast, uh, sometimes from the uh, cervix is uh, seen as well. Uh, kidney from melanoma. The kidney and melanoma more radio resistant, but they have doses that are given to them as well. Therefore, other discipline are disciplines are consulted to make inputs in decision taking. A group of people during a staff every week, from my experience here for, over, for about five months now, every week staff is called and all the disciplines interested about stake come into to study, to hear the clinical uh, part of the, uh, the uh, pathology in terms of the clinical aspect, history, physical examination. The neurosurgeon, of course, will make an input. The neuroradiologist will interpret the uh, images to achieve accurate diagnosis. And where need be, diagnosis might be uh, reached earlier with the help of the pathologist by obtain um, um, stereotactic biopsy, which we do here proficiently. Then after achieving, after getting histology, or in some cases, patients were treated, managed elsewhere, 
and because the tumor was not totally removed, gamma knife radiosurgery is used to, as an adjunct to primary surgery. Neuro-oncologists, neuroanesthesiologists, and others come in to make their input in a highly discussed case, and decisions are made, diagnosis is made, the dosage is, uh, uh, is um, suggested, the oncologist is there, and also makes an input as to the best form of treatment. This is a typical stuff of what happens uh, in decision making. Everybody clinically um, takes decision as to what's going to happen. However, I must state here that uh, this is not a tool that is going to put uh, neurosurgical technique or um, uh, finesse to the background. No, it is a technique that is used and has its own indication. Where tumors are gross and in a resectable area, it doesn't make sense to apply gamma knife radio surgery. So therefore, uh, there is a quote here, a fool with a tool is still a fool. Uh, however proficient the gamma knife is, uh, some people uh, will not get it right if they choose to apply it because it has its own uh, contraindication and possible complications. Basically, there are four steps in carrying out this uh, uh, procedure. We have frame fixation, acquisition of image, dosimetry planning, and radio surgical treatment. Now, I have in details uh, dosimetric planning here, which I will just uh, glide over during the presentation because it's highly technical, but I'll give a general perception of what it's all about. Now, the principle is to apply the frame. The G frame is uh, based on geometry, X, Y, Z axis, and how it's going to be applied. It's of course, you have, one has to be treated. That's what you do every day here. Frame is applied, image is acquired, treatment planning, and all that. For, for application of the frame, we have to obtain consent, well explained to the patient, diagnosis is made, of course. Uh, Pre-medication is given, a small operating room, asepsis using chlorhexidine, gluconate, or uh, in our center here, we use a, a betadine, Though some people say that there is MRI distortion, image distortion, but that's what we use, and we don't significantly see uh, image distortion. Now, local anesthesia, 1% lignocaine is uh, instilled at the level where the screws are going to be fixed on the skull. Propofol is sometimes given to reduce, uh, to enhance the, uh, the anesthetic, little anesthetic effect. The duration is usually seven to 10 minutes uh, in applying the frame. These are the frame materials. That is the G frame and the screwdriver and the pins and also other accessories. It has a lot of other accessories as well. Now, this is how anesthesia is given. For children, I must say here, for pediatric patients, General anesthesia is usually used throughout the procedure because the patient, of course, pediatric patients are usually anxious to have a frame like that fixed on the head will evoke a lot of um, anxiety or restlessness and the patient should be anesthetized from the application of the frame, acquisition of image, planning and treatment all through these four stages for a pediatric patient will have to be under general anesthesia. However, for adults, everything is done with the patient awake. These are how the pins are, and there are principles in applying film, especially for the models before the perfection and icon. Uh, th this is not too important in slide, I mean, uh, in current treatment, actually. The diagonal line must cross where the pathology is. For a central pathology, uh, the pin are applied so that the pathology will be in the middle. If it is in the posterior part of the brain, you know, the pin, the posterior pin will have to be longer to push pathology to the central part. That's essentially the essence of this uh, uh, slide. Now, we fix the frame, the same procedure with an assistant, then verifying 
and screwing the frame so that it doesn't come off at any stage of the procedure, diagonal, diagonal screwing with the torque of thumb and index finger, the force should not be more than that so that it, the pin does not cause any local complication. However, in some instances, you can imagine if a patient was uh, treated earlier, had wide craniotomy in place, something like this. And without knowing, you cannot, if you put a pin, you go straight into the brain tissue. So you have to have adequate uh, uh, examination of the patient to know where the craniotomy point was. And there are provisions where there are three port stands or three port pillars to avoid where craniotomy was cited. Now, there are pillars that are uh, special for certain particular pathologies. Like in this patient, that need, we need to be in the same parallel axis with the visual pathway. The posterior frame are short and really goes because we are going to get a obitomiata uh, line or CPAP line. We have to put a frame that will give us that uh, um, angle of uh, treatment. Like this is the visual pathway that has been uh, drawn here. Now, after applying the frame, we put the fiducial box. We have that for the MRI, we have that for the CT scan, and we have that for the angiogram. This is very important to get the axis, S, Y, Z axis, which is very important in defining the uh, image on the gamma plan, which we'll talk about briefly. Now, like this is the fiducial box for the MRI, fiducial box for CT scan, and fiducial box for the angiogram. This is a 2D image acquisition fiducial box. This is 3D, this is 3D. I mean, the CT is 3D, the MRI is 3D. Now, the image is taken into the MRI with specific sequence um, in a request in some instances. I'll talk about that in a slide ahead. Now, uh, frame adapter and frame cap are also tested to be sure that they fit very well. Now, I'll briefly talk about workflow. Now, the workflow generally follows these 18 uh, guidelines, 18 uh, steps, I might say. The 18 steps are graphical user interface. This is highly technical, actually. Create a new patient, you, you just understand that. Uh, we create new patient, uh, import image. In this center, the image acquisition uh, apparatus are networked into the workstation. The image is uh, networked and imported into the uh, system, which will be upgraded. Then uh, gray scale is adjusted so that you see the lesion very well and see the interface. Then we define the study based on the fiducials, um, uh, supplies called measurements, and because at the end you have the measurement of your lesions as well. Is dosage. You give the patient a supply frame count uh, confirmation and detailed frame measurement. Uh, I guess let me go through the slides. Then this is your graphic how you acquire image, create the and how you um, create a new patient, um, import image, define the image based on the uh, uh, stereotactic. It's a bit theoretical, actually. Uh, then, now, it's very important I say this. While defining the image, this point definition is brought to the most, the outer point and the last point before the middle point. Like I said, it's a bit uh, technical. Uh, until the whole uh, points are all green. That means the images are well defined. Uh, for a two dimensional image that is like uh, angiography, this is how the fiducial is, and this is the principle how you define the image. That, like a vascular issue, the image is uh, defined based on this cross and star 
on the judicial box. Okay, then the frame cap is tested. Uh, there are measurements that must be recorded based on the, uh, the, the pillars because it's very important in defining the treatment uh, plan. Now, uh, define any risk organ. There is what we call organ at risk, which I've talked about before, like uh, the optic nerve, the brain stem, the vestibular uh, cochlear apparatus, uh, some the cranial nerves where lesions are sighted, they are uh, next to them. There are minimal um, doses that those organs can take. So in fact, uh, there, there are techniques in which you actually adjust the dose so that it doesn't go to those organs at risk. Okay, let's quickly go uh, to after defining the lesion, shots are given manually, shots are given into the lesion until you really conform to all the tissue that is pathological. You start with eight millimeter shot. After filling up everything, then you use four millimeter to actually fill up all the gaps. Okay, that's all we're talking about. We'll go quickly over this thing. Then there are what we call dynamic shaping. Yes, this is also for organ at risk. So that, uh, let me, yes. Dynamic shaping has zero, one, two, three, four. This is, uh, if you can see very well, we can see the organ at risk here, which is uh, the optic, um, optic, uh, optic nerve. So you want to protect it. And this is where your 50% isodose is, and you have to protect it, uh, protect it depending on the pathology and the dosage you are going to give. So you apply grade one, the optic nerve is now still not fully spared. Uh, you keep going, okay? The optic nerve is fairly spared more at uh, dynamic shaping level, level three. Then, Yes, this is the maximum dynamic shaping and uh, the optic nerve, the two of them are spared. And with this, you can uh, give uh, uh, treatment. Now, this is finally what the topography looks like. You see the optic, the visual apparatus is there marked out and is uh, spared from the irradiation, the maximum dose. Uh, that could be deleterious to the visual pathway. Now, after this, the patient, the, the draft is approved, printed, signed, and exported into the machine. Uh, this is signed because it's highly, highly specialized. Then there is another principle of inverse planning. Instead of uh, manually planning this, you can define the pathology, draw it, and assign the dose to it, the machine, uh, the uh, gamma knife just calculates the dose that is required for uh, the treatment. That's all about the planning. Now next is post-treatment. On average, within about a day, the treatment should be over. The patient comes back to normal activity, receive follow-up appointment with doctors. And the follow-up is very important. Now, these are the dosages, actually, that for various pathologies. Uh, AVM, these are the dosages. It depends on the center. Uh, uh, quotations here might even have the, uh, uh, the quotation of some other uh, centers and how they apply it. But basically, what uh, is shown here is what applies mainly in our center. ABM, this is what is the dose that is given, acoustic uh, neuroma or vestibular schwannoma. This is the dosage. Meningioma, depending on whether it is a, a grade one, two, or three, a typical or malignant uh, meningioma, the dosage is uh, also stated. However, radiotherapy can be given, and gamma knife booster dose is given as well. Now, there are centers and their own various regimen. 
that this is a peace book, this is RTOG and others. This is a dozen uh, the regimen. Then uh, Karolinska in Sweden, this is uh, based on the size of metal, brain metastasis. This is what they give. Because like I said earlier on in the presentation, the size, if the size is small, you can give more doses. If it is large, you give less dose because of the effect of the irradiation on the adjacent uh, uh, brain. Now, usually single session, I kept on repeating this, total number of ISO centers may vary depend on the size, shape, and location of targets. Multiple lesions are treated. Each ISO center has a set of three cartesian uh, X, Y, Z, uh, stereotypic coordinates corresponding to each location in three-dimensional space as defined using a rigidly stereotactic frame. Uh, I've talked about this in earlier. Then special imaging. Yes, where certain lesions need precision, you need special imaging, special sequences, especially on MRI. Of course, MRI of 1.5 Tesla. MRI that can do 3D uh, construction, uh, reconstruction of the image. So it is uh, extremely important to have the uh, uh, MRI that is uh, meant to support this kind of treatment. Usually for pituitary uh, lesions, we need fast suppression. Then carbonous malformation, variable echo multiplanar, in addition to uh, an, uh, um, angiography sometimes. Then thalamotomy in functional uh, uh, procedure now, we need additional fast inverse recovery sequence or DTI. Um, you can uh, get a tractography out of that. Then brain metastasis, double dose contrast with two millimeter cut, brain metastasis magnetic transfer sequence, and CISS, that's constructive interference in steady state. This one is used, especially at the score base, uh, T2 image, where all the uh, cranial nerve and vessels are defined very, very defined, especially actually in functional uh, pathologies like uh, um, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, where you might even see an aberrant vessel that is impinging on, the, on, the, on that cranial nerve, uh, or thick um, hemifacial spasm, you can see the vessel that is uh, impinging on the facial nerve. Then results, results are, you can just imagine this. This is a, a patient with cavernous angioma, the hemangioma, of the cavernous sinus hemangioma that had treatment, and after six years, you can imagine without any cut to the body, you can imagine the result of this. The tumor is more or less 90% uh, gone. Uh, then worldwide, this is the, uh, the cases that are seen and the uh, that, and that, uh, that have uh, gamma knife uh, treatment. Then this is another result of a patient with a, a, um, a three years, 95% three years after gamma knife of a patient that had a metastasis. This is of metastasis that survived because the primary area was taken care of. Previously, I will go for uh, craniotomy and do this, and the collateral damage can be uh, significant, actually. Now, this is a five lesions, metastasis, and these ones can all be planned and be treated. Yes, and um, within three hours, treatment session is over, and they have, most of them die from the primary disease or metastasis to the other, other parts. The Metastasis to the brain after gamma nerve surgery is usually stabilized or even totally uh, uh, fried out. Sorry for using that language. The worldwide uh, indications for gamma nerve radio surgery, this is the, essentially this is from the uh, gamma nerve society, the distribution. And this is a DTI image of a uh, Talamotomy for some uh, uh, movement disorders, tremor, you know, is highly precise, single target, high dose. And doses 
130 grain at a single point. And the result can be very, very remarkable. Following up these patients, benefits do not, sorry, benefits do not manifest immediately. It can take three to 12 months. However, some lesions, uh, benefit can be immediate. For somebody who has had, uh, hypothalamic uh, hematoma with intractable seizure, benefits can be uh, within a matter of days. You know, the seizure can just abort immediately. Um, and also depend on the pathology. That's why I talked about uh, 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 hematoma or the hypothalamus. Then in seizures, it takes 18 to 24 months. Then AVM, very effective, and you can have up to 80% reduction. Follow-up depends on the pathology. Malignant lesions, initial months, patient is followed up frequently, you know, uh, to see whether there are new lesions and to know what is happening to the, uh, um, to the treated lesions. Then three months, Thereafter, after two, three months, uh, three months, and another three months, that's after six months, a uh, patient can be followed up for every six months. For benign lesions, every six months, both for clinical and imaging uh, follow-up, thereafter every one year for two years, then um, after five years, then after every five years. For vascular uh, lesions, vascular angiography, uh, is done after five years, after following them up in this kind of lesion. Then assess new complaints, benefits, size of lesion, new lesions, other complications. Advantage, no anesthesia, no incision, no deficit at the end, no infection, no bleeding and the challenges of bleeding. Brain metastasis because of the multiplicity and the depth of location can be treated or limited uh, reach to lesions within the cranial cavity. Contraindication is any cause of raised intracranial pressure. Massive edema, uh, um, obstructive hydrocephalus, uh, tumors. Uh, well, in the current uh, treatment, tumor size is not particularly a contraindication. Tumor size, for emphasis, is uh, not uh, contraindication to treatment. And that is why the uh, current uh, uh, use of the words like hypofractionation or staged radi uh, radiosurgery comes into play. Then increasing to in, uh, increase compression tumors, that's raised intracranial pressure generally, as I've said, uh, the compensation of the tumor. So in multi-staff meeting, the canopic performance of the patient must be uh, assessed because it's a very expensive treatment regime. You can't afford to treat with patients that have uh, very little life expectancy. Within three months, a uh, patient uh, is going to die, then uh, it's, it will be of no use. Then pregnancy at whatever stage is a complication. Now complications are very rare, which anxiety, syncopal episodes, coronary events, headaches, facial pain, radiation necrosis. Very important, it's a source of worry to uh, the radio surgeon uh, and it is idiosyncratic with patient and the consequence of that, because of that, uh, we avoid uh, uh, um, this uh, complication and look out for them after gamma knife radio surgery. Uh, new motor deficits due to edema, perhaps, or injury to the organ at risk, uh, symptomatic hydrocephalus and delayed seizures, yes. Then adverse effect, which is very mild and transient, nausea, headache, transient, numbness, fatigue, hair loss, for lesions are close to the skull, then it's very, very expensive. Disadvantage is not particularly uh, a disadvantage. The frame, which some people might describe as a bit grotesque, for frame to be fit onto the skull for uh, some form of treatment, fairly long duration of uh, uh, treatment compared to LINAC, but the precision is small. LINAC go in uh, minutes, but the precision is not as much as uh, gamma knife. This duration can be, 
what I'm talking about for long, long duration is the treatment duration is not more than one, four, five hours at most. But some people might see it as a bit uh, prolonged compared to linear. Careful follow up is needed. Edema and use of steroid where certain complications arise, then organ at risk to support treatment uh, size. Then cost of gamma knife radiosurgery treatment is much for depending on the pathology uh, across five years uh, treatment plan. Then gamma knife surgery is surgery without anesthesia, without any incision, no hair shaving, no infection, no blood transmission, no death, no disability. Gamma knife surgery is powerful enough to destroy undesirable tissue in the brain without surrounding normal brain. No lengthy post-operative care, no loss of productive uh, life. Uh, the patient returns to normal life within a day or two of treatment. This option is an armamentarium of patient's care and must be reserved for specific pathologies as it is not alternative to good surgical principles and skills. In medical practice, there are times that consequences of surgical care can be profound, if not catastrophic. And that is what caused the shift in the frontier to get to eliminate all those problems. In the quest to shift the frontiers of health provision, man has continued to use the uh, knowledge of science and computer to foster the cure and care for brain pathologies that hither to carry grave outcomes. Indeed, the knowledge of this should be made available for practice or for the practitioners to give this as an, op as an option to patients they are caring for. In conclusion, a novel and good frontier of neurosurgery. Thank you so much for listening. Oh my God, it is very nice. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nurdin. Thank Hi, you so much, Professor Jimo. Thank you so this much. This was a wonderful presentation. I don't know if Dr. John is online. I, I have just one small question quickly. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. I really. I, it's Dr. Kabulo. Okay, no, I'm asking if Dr. John is there to moderate. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I was uh, yes. doing some promoting. And thank you very much, Doctor. We're going to open it up. Uh, to comments and yes. questions. Excellent. Thanks for taking the time. Okay, Dr. Gabul, go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Jimo. This was a very good presentation. I really enjoyed your presentation. You know, you. this is an area where usually we run uh, away from, but uh, I understood many things. I have just a small question I wanted to ask. It's about uh, um, fractionated stereostatic radio series. Yeah. Uh, how do you do that biological selection? No, hypofractionation, but we, we, in radio surgery, unlike conventional radiotherapy, in radio surgery, we call it hypofractionation. What it means is that you give a dose to is required for, but it's still a focused irradiation, focused uh, treatment, but you give the dose less than what is required ideally because the uh, lesion is large, then after some time, let's, uh, after uh, some time, maybe a month, you repeat the dose, but cumulatively slightly higher than the initial, uh, than, than what is required for that tissue. Let me give you an example. If a tissue require uh, 14 gray, and you are hypofractionating, you probably give 10 first and 10 later. Theoretically, I'm just giving for example. So in effect, cumulatively is 20, but because you've given it at different intervals, however, focused with radiation, it becomes 20, if you get what I'm saying. My teacher, Adil, is watching from Samuel Howie, he will contribute later. That is the basic question in a radio surgery with hypofractionation. Okay, Dr. Kabulo. 
Have you got that? Have you got yes, that? Yes, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the answer. Okay. Uh, Nauru, did you have a question? Or, I'm sorry, Joseph. Joseph, do you have a question? I believe he texted me. Uh, Obande, you can unmute yourself before you speak. Go ahead, Joseph. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Jimo. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you so much. I was wondering, um, in times past, the ethical dilemma of using um, radiation to treat non-malignant condition was a big issue with gamma knife and non-malignant um, management of non-malignant lesions. With your current experience, what's your take on this issue? Thank you. Um, thank you so much, uh, Obande, uh, as a, a good one. Now, going by the, the biology of the treatment, which I think I didn't emphasize on, the treatment is based on the irradiation to a pathological tissue. And that pathological tissue, uh, it is known that irradiation to the DNA or RNA alters the tumor or the, the lesion, either vascular or functional. It alters the function. Thereafter, it acts at cellular level, and thereafter, it acts as tissue level. Is cell death quite all right, but it's not like cell death that needs uh, removal. It's death, like apoptosis, that remains within the tissue. Okay? Now, why it is not much an ethical issue is the result we get and the long term complication rate, which is far, far, far less. Of course, you say you are irradiating this, the brain. There is a chance of secondary malignancy coming up. But it is known over time that the chance for that is extremely low. It, of course, it exists, but it's extremely, extremely low. So ethically, uh, I don't think there is any doubt currently as to the treatment use of a gamma knife in treating uh, intracranial pathology. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you, it. Melhaku, you. do you have any comments or questions? Professor Melawi. Okay, uh, I just want to congratulate my friend uh, Abdullah for his excellent talk. And I hope uh, everyone got uh, the, the message. I think uh, the, the questions there. Uh, First question was about uh, uh, the tissue reparation, the differential effect. But uh, for me, that was uh, very interesting uh, to, to share these uh, uh, aspects. And thank you uh, again, uh, Dr. John, for all what you are doing for colleagues. Um, thank you. OK, very good. Uh, any more c comments or questions from the other panelists? <laughs> uh, Hello, see. everyone, and uh, Hello, I Nuru. To... Hi, John. Hello. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Professor Gimo for his uh, excellent uh, talk. Uh, uh, he make a great work, and uh, everything was summarized uh, in um, in his uh, presentation. And uh, I would like to to congratulate uh, him, and I would like also to to say big thanks for my professor Adil Melhawi, with who I start uh, my first uh, steps in uh, in neurosurgery. Right. And uh, I am I I am so uh, I am recognized about everything they 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 done for me and. Uh, uh, I am so happy to see them uh, today in this panel, and uh, uh, I remember the first time he, he showed me how to fix the frame, and I will never forget that. <laughs> so um, I'm so happy to see you again, and uh, uh, I don't have anything to say. Everything is clear. Uh, everything I noted, uh, it is clear for me. So uh, congratulations, uh, Professor mm -hmm. Jimo, you summarize. Uh, everything in your presentation. Of course, you can say uh, 
we can say all uh, about uh, about radio surgery in just one uh, presentation but uh, i would uh, uh, encourage uh, everyone who want to 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 know and to learn about radio surgery to come in the rabat center uh, in Africa, uh, it is one of it is the, the first center who opened the door for everyone who wants to learn about uh, radio surgery, and uh, it will benefit uh, for everyone and uh, everywhere area in Africa, because nowadays uh, we should uh, all uh, of them uh, to have a one uh, one motto: it is uh, do not harm. And uh, in this uh, philosophy, we should always think about uh, uh, radio surgery. And the indication is also clear, so why not? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Nero is speaking next week. Uh, he's going to speak about uh, spinal cord injuries, right, Nero? Yes, John. I will try to speak next week, yes. Okay, very good. Yeah. He's given a lot of talks. Uh, okay, any more comments or questions? Zolo, do you have any comments or questions? I know you're kind of challenged there by the bandwidth. And, and by the way, let me, if you're in a, a low bandwidth situation, you can turn off your picture uh, like I'm doing now uh, because that saves bandwidth. Uh, th that saves bandwidth if you're ever in a situation. Uh, anyways, so a little, little, Tip for the trade, Nuru. <laughs> okay, any more comments? Samuel, do you have any comments or questions? You, you... I have a question. Go ahead, Samuel. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Timor. You, yeah. you have indeed made us proud. Uh, it's an excellent presentation. I'm sorry I joined late, but I got a lot of information from your presentation. Uh, I just have a question which uh, I hope would have a surprisingly good answer. Um, are there any prospects of having Damanai Radio Surgery in your center when you return here in Zaria, Nigeria, anytime soon? Okay. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Welcome. Thank you so much. John, um, he's my resident. The fellow that, uh, Samuel Ghana is my resident. Um, and I have to say at this point that uh, indeed that is the essence of being here. Um, we are making moves through the hospital administration and through the Ministry of Health to see the possibility of acquiring one. Uh, the gamma knife itself costs about from four to four point five million dollars, which in Nigerian currency is 1.5 billion naira. It's uh, something that is quite much, and uh, we are hoping that uh, we'll be able to uh, get one. Uh, the primary fellowship here is a um, stereotaxi. Generally, we'll start with that and subsequently upgrade into having the uh, gamma knife uh, uh, form of treatment. Are there any centers in Africa, uh, doctor, at all? Any gamma knife centers at all in, in Africa? No, it is just in Morocco. No, no, no. And Morocco is the only one in all of Africa? Um, it's, it's, um, there is in uh, South Africa and uh, um, Egypt, I'm made to understand by Professor Melawi. If he's still there, you can he confirm that, please? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Egypt, uh, South Africa, and Morocco till now. Three okay. countries in Africa till now. Okay. And they all have the latest, the latest uh, icon uh, gamma knife? I'm not sure, all of them, but uh, at least perfection is uh, in the three countries, I think. Okay, okay. At least uh, Morocco has a um, icon for several years now and the first to have it in Africa. In fact, the first to have the perfection in Africa and the first to have icon in Africa. And uh, that's, that's mm -hmm. quite impressive. Yes, indeed. Very good. Okay, uh, I really appreciate everyone coming out and uh, thank you, Abdullah, for an excellent talk and, and I hope to see you a lot more.
I have Endal, Samuel's, and Joseph's email address so that every presentation we have, you'll be getting an email announcing it. For example, when Naru speaks next week, you're going to get an email with the link to enter the panel if you have time at that point. Uh, I know how the life of a neurosurgeon, sometimes you can't predict on, on a Saturday, so, but you certainly will have the option to say, hey, I want to jump in the panel here and comment uh, with this talk. Or you may just want to watch it on rounds, whatever. Uh, so anyways, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, I wanted to, if uh, Adil is still there, I wanted him to make an input into if there is any area of doubt or gray area for him to emphasize based on my uh, presentation. You know, because he's my teacher here, I want him to clear certain things that might uh, be that might need to be cleared for records. Oh, okay, okay. Are you still there? Yeah, sure. of course. Uh, my my friend Abdullah, as you, we reviewed, we see that uh, your today presentation was even more complete, and uh, for me that was uh, really perfect. Congratulations, congratulations to everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, very good, Abdullah. We'll talk after. I'll just send this right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you.